I'm not gonna lie, I'm really nervous to share this message because number one, YouTube is probably gonna censor it and suppress it because of the topic. And number two, I know a lot of people probably don't wanna hear this, but whenever God gives me a message, whenever he gives me a download, I know I have to be obedient and share. Sex is not just sex. Sex is a spiritual exchange. The fact that you can create a whole life, you can create a whole human, sometimes two if you have twins, sometimes three if you have triplets. The fact that most of us, unless you were born from a fertility clinic or a surrogate, most of us came from a man and a woman having sex. That is powerful. And yes, I understand. We live in his flesh. We live in these meat suits. We seek pleasure. That's human. However, sex is not just a pleasure-seeking act. It's a spiritual exchange. When you have sex with somebody, they take a piece of you and you take a piece of them. There's a such thing as oxytocin. Oxytocin is the love chemical. And this gets released whenever you have sex with a person and it's heightened from skin to skin contact when you butt naked and you skin to skin with that person and guess what that same chemical is produced when a woman is pregnant nursing or when she first has her child that is powerful that's what makes people go so crazy over babies that's what makes babies and mothers and even fathers feel connected and have that bond that's why they have them do skin to skin contact with a baby when it's first born. Here's the thing, oxytocin is a beautiful thing, but it can be a drug. And if you're receiving oxytocin from the wrong person, a person that you're unequally yoked with, that you don't got no business dealing with, you're receiving oxytocin from them through having sex, that gives you a false sense of closeness to that person. And that's the reason why you can't let go. So then you have two toxic ass people having a kid together, not intentionally, not because, oh, we love each other and we want to create a life together, but simply because they was horny. <laughs> and they bring a child into this earth that didn't ask to be here, that they pass all types of generational trauma on to. And everything I'm saying is coming from a place of love. It might just come off a little bit fiery and rawr because I'm really passionate because I see so many people, young and old, that have so much trauma and it's generational. And it's because people have this mindset that sex is just sex. I'm just trying to bust a nut. Like it's, it's all about seeking pleasure. And the thing is, when you don't seek God, yeah, you're probably going to constantly seek pleasure because you're using something outside of God to fill a void that only God can fill. <laughs> Sex is beautiful. Having a child with somebody and mating with them for life is beautiful, but it has to be done right. And I don't mean you have to get married first and then have sex and then have a kid and ta-da, it's going to be perfect. No, what I mean by right is doing it with God, having God guide you, having God lead you. Don't get married to somebody if God didn't tell you, yes, this is the person I have for you. And a lot of people say, oh, I believe in God, I pray, I do this, I do that. But they don't include God in their love life. They don't include God in their dating process, in their courting process. And somebody might say, I know people that got married first. I know people that waited to have sex until they got married and had kids and they still ended up divorced. Guess what? That's because God did not lead them into that marriage. They led themselves. You have to ask God to guide you in all areas and aspects of your life. When you try to strategically pick a partner, oh, this person fits X, Y, Z. Oh, my list, they fit everything on this list. And you don't go off of what you feel in your spirit. You go off of a list, you go off of human logic, and you don't go off of what you feel in your spirit. Yes, you probably are gonna end up with the wrong person. Our intuition is always speaking to us, but we ignore it because we don't know how to be alone. We don't know how to trust God. We don't know how to wait on God. We're impatient. But you have to understand, 
what God has for you is worth waiting on. And patience is one of the fruits of the spirit. <laughs> and I know somebody might say, well, I'm going to just use a condom. That's good. You should use a condom if you are going to be out here. But that is not going to stop you from feeling that oxytocin because you're still skin to skin, but naked with that person. And you're still sharing your life force energy with that person. I'm really not here to judge. Y'all can do what y'all want. Just because I'm abstinent, I don't expect everybody else to be. <laughs> I'm just here to share the little bit of wisdom God has given me. And I didn't used to think like this. I used to be a very freaky girl. <laughs> but God showed me and revealed to me in so many ways how deep and spiritual sex is and that I should not just be sharing my body with anybody. But the reason I thought it was okay was because I was desensitized. And the reason I was desensitized was because I had a lot of unresolved trauma that I wasn't facing, that I was suppressing, and I didn't love myself. So I would say the biggest thing is to heal. Before you bring a child into this earth, that didn't ask to be here, heal. Work on yourself. Heal yourself so your future kids don't have to heal from you. Now, I'm not judging, but I'm also not condoning premarital sex. But if you are gonna be doing it, please use protection. So you don't accidentally bring a child into this world that didn't ask to be here with a person that you really don't wanna mate with and be connected with for life. I pray this message helped you in some way and I pray I didn't come off too preachy. <laughs> and if you like it, make sure you like it, make sure you're subscribed and I'll see y'all soon, bye. <laughs>